Now on Nightside, heavy rains across the region are pushing creeks and rivers to the brim, flooding homes and endangering lives. If it's not raining at your house now, it will be soon. I'll tell you about the wet weather moving in overnight and when we're going to get a break in the first alert forecast. And a man's body found in the road this morning. What police know so far. You're watching 4 News Now Nightside. We're following breaking news out of Liberty Lake tonight. Within the last 30 minutes, Liberty Lake City Council passed the controversial ordinance that would give them control over the library board. Thanks so much for staying up with us. I'm Derek Dice. After several hours of discussion, the vote passed 5 to 2. Mayor Chris Kaminskis, who voted, who, excuse me, who vetoed a similar ordinance back in May, has said she will not veto this decision. According to council member Chris Cargill, there is nothing in the ordinance that will allow the council to ban books. He said as the library board will still make the policies, but the council can review them. This library ordinance has been a heated debate in Liberty Lake for the past several months. Now, the online stream of that meeting was abruptly cut short before it even began. Range Media reports the stream was ended because one online attendee started yelling the N-word repeatedly. We reached out to council members to find out what exactly caused the stream to end, but we're still waiting for the official word. Heavy rains across the region are pushing creeks and rivers to the brim in Gresham, Oregon. Just outside of Portland, a man was helping homeless campers when he was swept away in this creek and killed. Emergency crews tried to save him, but the water was simply too dangerous. Floodwaters from the Gray River trapped this woman on top of her car in southwest Washington. A Coast Guard helicopter lowered a rescue swimmer down to save her. The Coast Guard says it rescued five people in Waukiacum County from flooding today. And all that rain caused a landslide shutting down a stretch of Amtrak's Coast Starlight Rail between Seattle and Portland. The company expects the closure to last through Thursday morning. We're going to send things over to Chris Crocker now for a look at that first alert forecast. Thankfully, not that much rain over here. Uh, no, we are seeing a fraction of the amount of rain they're seeing on the other side of the mountains. That said, we do have some concerns about flooding in the Northeast Mountains and through the Panhandle of Idaho down into the Central Panhandle where there is a flood advisory through Thursday morning at 4 o'clock. It is the uh, combination of the steady rains, but also melting snow. We are melting snow very quickly in our mountains. Here's a look at our radar right now. We did get a break in the rain in Spokane this evening, but the radar is beginning to fill back in. Meanwhile, we continue to see the steady rains uh, in parts of northern Spokane County and up into the Sandpoint area. Some of the yellow there you see there on your screen is where we're seeing some of the heavier precipitation. Right now in Spokane, just a few sprinkles starting to redevelop. It is raining outside uh, the station here at 500 West Boone Avenue. We also see some heavier rain further uh, to the north around Deer Park, up to Diamond Lake, and over around Loon Lake as well. Our temperatures after almost record highs and we did have a record in Lewiston. We are still in the upper 40s in Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, Pullman, even Bonners Ferry is at 48. Your Wednesday planner, we have some light rain in the morning, but that is our next chance that we might see a brief break before the rain picks up in the afternoon and really gets going tomorrow evening. I'll let you know when we're going to get a break and tell you about the snow on the way in the forecast in just a few minutes, Derek. All right, Chris, with the rain and flood advisories, now is a very good time to download the 4 News Now weather app. You can check out the interactive radar for wherever you are. Just search KXY in your app store to download it now. New details tonight in the police shooting that left one suspected shoplifter dead in front of a Walmart in North Spokane. According to the Spokane Independent Investigative Response Team, a police officer working security at the North Colton Walmart saw a man possibly stealing merchandise with a device meant to remove anti-theft tags. The officer then confronted the suspect as he tried to leave the store and a fight broke out as they tried to handcuff him. Officers then tased the man. Investigators say at some point, someone yelled gun. The Spokane police officer then saying the suspect had been shot. He was later pronounced dead at the scene. The officer who fired their weapon is now on administrative leave. Well, Pettit Drive in Spokane is back open after a man's body was found in the road this morning near the West Central Community Center. The Spokane Police Department received a call about a man lying in the road near Pettit and Augusta. Medics tried to revive the man, but he was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say it's possible this was a hit and run, but it's still too early to tell.
this time of year, we always have increased activity when it comes to um, danger to pedestrians. The reason is the, the hours that we have daylight are diminished. Um, weather like this, when it's, when it's rainy out, makes really hampers visibility, so it makes it a lot harder for people to see. The name of the victim has not been released. This is a developing story, though, and we will update you as we learn more. The jury trial is set for the man charged with the murders of four people in Kellogg. This family of four was shot and killed in their home nearly six months ago. And the man accused was their neighbor. Major John Kaler is charged with four counts of first-degree murder. According to court documents, the parties in this case were said to be trying mediation outside of court in hopes of reaching an agreement. But now the trial is set to start on March 4th. Pre-trial is set for the end of January. We'll keep you updated here on 4 News Now and on KXOY.com. Around the Northwest, the family of five was found dead in their Vancouver, Washington home in a suspected murder-suicide. The Clark County Sheriff's Office says they were alerted by a law enforcement in the Seattle area to do a welfare check at this home. They found the suspect, who was the father, his wife, his brother, and his two adult daughters were all shot dead. Unsettled, obviously, that we've lost somebody so close to us in such a horrific way. We were all out here while somebody died, and I don't know, that's just where I, I keep going back to, like, that's where I'm thinking. The sheriff's office says they don't have any history of responding to calls at this house, and the suspect was not known to law enforcement. Well, Gonzaga basketball had one final tune-up before hitting the road to take on the Huskies this weekend. The Zags were hosting Arkansas Pine Bluff. Sports director Julian Minnesone joins us in studio. And Julian, you're saying this is one of the Zags' best performances of the season so far. Yeah, just from a perspective of they came in at number seven in the AP poll. It's the highest ranking that the Bulldogs have had this season. So it would be interesting to see how the Zags would respond with a, a little bit of added pressure. We picked this one up in the first half, and it was domination from the opening tip, especially from the big fellas. Graham E.K. slams it home off the alley-oop from Ryan Nemhard. Gonzaga started the game on a 28-2 run. More from the big guys. Nolan Hickman misses it, but Braden Huff is right there to clean it up. Huff finishes through the contact. He led the Zags with 19 points. Second half, Anton Watson is going to put the exclamation point on this bad boy. Watson out on the break and he's going to get the kennel on its feet with a slam dunk. Gonzaga wins 111-71. Fifth straight win for the Zags. And coming up in sports, what the Bulldogs had to say about tonight's win and the challenge against the Huskies on Saturday on the road. Live in the studio, Julian Minnesone, 4 News Now Sports. All right, so to come here on Nightside, how one woman is making the Christmas wishes of wildfire survivors come true. And a little boy killed by two dogs in Oregon just over two months after a similar event happened right here in Spokane. We picked over, up over a half inch of rain at the airport in Spokane. Some locations in North Idaho over two inches in a 24-hour period. Meanwhile, the high today, 52. That compares to a, an average high of 35 and one degree away from our record. Sunset is now in the three o'clock hour. I'll be back with more wet weather in the seven day forecast. Connect with 4 News Now on KXLY Plus. 4 News Now is brought to you by Move Fitness. A Washington group home where boys should have been safe. The reality Sick and anus things that shouldn't happen to children happened to me. Decades later, justice. But is it enough? Hell on the range. Thursday on 4 News Now at 6. Hey there, everybody. It's me, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. Yes. Expect the unexpected. <laughs> and I've never seen you in the club till it closed. Well, I beg to differ. In fact, I even have a tattoo oh! on my leg. Jimmy Kimmel Live, weeknights on ABC. time of year the reindeer fly you can't see them on their sleigh ride across the sky gather all your friends around or go out and paint the town it's the only time of year the whole wide world turns upside down Spokane's grand holiday tradition lives at Christmas Tree Elegance in the Davenport Hotel and River Park Square. Fabulous packages raffled to support our symphony. 
We, we want, want a tree. tree. We, we want, want a tree, and so can you. If you have a vehicle you no longer need, you can give it new purpose through Union Gospel Mission. Simply go to ugmmotors.org or call 509-327-HELP to schedule a pickup. Your donation gives people like Tyler food, shelter, job training, and the opportunity for a whole new life. Be a driver of change. Donate your vehicle to Union Gospel Mission. Another successful year of Making Spirit Sprite at Cowley Park. It just keeps getting bigger and better. We couldn't do it without the wonderful help from our sponsors, Ace Hardware and Horizon Credit Union. I'm Mark Peterson with the Extreme Team. 4 News Now is brought to you by Fairway Floor. Welcome back. One woman is making sure every kid in need gets their Christmas wish. Jody Rivas has been playing Santa for medical aid kids for several years. But after the Gray Fire this summer, she says that this job is more important than ever. Jody collects letters to Santa from local kids through a P.O. box and online. Once she receives the letters, she creates tags listing a gender, age, and gift that's hung up at local businesses. That way, anyone can help make a Christmas wish come true. I got to go to the store and buy it myself. I will. I will not tell a child, no, Christmas has to be magical. It just, it has to be. In response to the Gray Fire this year, kids, adults, and entire families can submit their letters to Santa. If you'd like to help grant a Christmas wish, you can find the link in this story on KXOY.com. Well, the Manitou Park Holiday Light Show will shine once again this weekend. The volunteer run event is free. Saturday and Sunday is drive through only viewing from 6.30 to 9.30. Then on Monday, you can actually walk through the winter wonderland. You don't want to miss it. Check out the details on KXLY.com. Always a pretty cool thing to do with your family. Absolutely. And it adds a little bit to it if there is snow. Snow. Yes. Uh, and we do have a little bit of snow snow coming in the forecast eventually. Here are four things to know about your weather. Right now, we have an atmospheric river that used to be known commonly as the Pineapple Express, which I think explains the, where that warm, moist air is coming from down around Hawaii. Those are our warmest, wettest days in the winter. That rain is going to continue through Wednesday and to a lesser extent on Thursday with very few breaks. And then we've got snow on the way this weekend. Here is a look at that atmospheric river again, originating down by the Hawaiian Islands, subtropical moisture in a narrow and intense band of rain in the Pacific Northwest. We've seen heavy rains on the west side and the snow level has been very high. Right now around 8,000 feet, that takes it up above most of the ski runs, 7,000 feet tomorrow morning, then it'll be down to 6,000 feet tomorrow night. It is dropping. That is getting close closer to lodge level at most of the ski areas. It'll be down at pass level by Thursday, uh, just above the top of the South Hill. And finally, by Friday, our snow level back down in the valleys, and that's where it should stay through the weekend. In the meantime, that atmospheric river has really focused from I-90 to the north. Moscow and Pullman, Lewiston, you have just barely got a taste of the rain that we have seen and will continue to see in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. Here's 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. And again, that is one of the times that you may get a break, especially in Coeur d'Alene, Spokane. We are right on the very far southern edge of that atmospheric river. And then more rain comes in. Here's noon and starts to pick up some of those southern locations on the Palouse. That is the cold front coming through and the back edge of that atmospheric river. So that moves through and we bring in drier, colder air behind it. One more round of wet weather Thursday morning, possibly a little bit of mountain snow to go along with it, and then we are drying out for a little bit. An isolated snow shower possible on Friday, but mostly we are going to be dry until Saturday. Forecast rain between now and this time tomorrow, still very impressive, uh, very similar to what we have seen today in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. Lows tonight in the 40s in most locations, highs tomorrow in the 40s and 50s. Your seven-day forecast, 
We are going to keep that rain going on Thursday to a lesser extent. Friday, the chance of a few snow showers, more snow Saturday and into Sunday. And this could be heavy mountain snow, particularly over the Cascades. In the valleys right now, it only looks like it's going to be light in the one to two inch range. And then hopefully we can hold on to some of that snow. We have some colder weather coming Monday and into Tuesday. It is right before Christmas. I think most people are still pro snow for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we, we need some now, right? Right, exactly. Right. Chris, thank you. We're less than a month away from Spokane Mayor-elect Lisa Brown taking office. One of the biggest challenges her new administration faces is what's going to happen to the Trent Shelter once its contract with the Salvation Army is up at the end of the month. The City Council was supposed to vote on the new Salvation Army contract last night, but it's been deferred until December 14th two weeks away from their deadline. If the city council can't reach an agreement with the Salvation Army, the shelter is at risk of shutting down, leaving hundreds in the cold this winter. Council member Jonathan Bingle says the council is looking for clarity from the Salvation Army before it can agree to another contract. Not a single member has even just, you know, remotely discussed that getting shut down in January. Um, but we do have a budget that is hard and fast, and so we need to find ways to make it work within that budget. Bingle says council members just want to make sure they can afford everything needed to keep that shelter running under the Salvation Army. New here on Nightside, a tragic story in Portland mirroring a similar event that happened here in Spokane just over two months ago. A six-year-old boy died today when two dogs attacked him. Drew Marine has the story. This morning when I take my child to the school, I saw a lot of police activity here. Portland police say they responded to a report of a dog attack at a home on Northeast 112th Avenue around 8 o'clock Tuesday morning. Spokesperson Mike Benner says the homeowner opened the door covered in blood after trying to stop two of her dogs from attacking a six-year-old boy. He tragically did not survive the attack, though Benner says the owner tried everything she could to stop them. Uh, the homeowner... Uh, slash dog owner went into the garage to tend to the dog. Uh, the six-year-old uh, boy opened the door uh, to the garage, and that is when this attack happened. We understand that the, the homeowner, dog owner, uh, did everything in her power to stop this attack. Um, at some point, even grabbing a gun, it, it never got that far. Uh, but uh, she did everything she could uh, to save this boy's life. Police say the boy doesn't live in this house. Every morning, his grandma drops him off so the dog owner can take him to school. And the attack happened after he was dropped off. Multnomah County Animal Services came to the scene to take custody of the two dogs. Neighbor Sergey Dengub spoke with one of the homeowners this morning after the attack and was shocked to hear what happened as he's interacted with these dogs before. And they're great, they're so friendly, they're jumping on me, you know, and then they're big dogs, but they're really friendly dogs. Benner says the police bureau's heart breaks for the little boy and his family. I mean, anytime something like this happens, it's a shock to the conscious, but to have this happen just weeks before Christmas, it's just unimaginable. And that was Drew Marine reporting. A Ponderay County ranch where boys should have been safe was actually a house of horror. What a recently settled lawsuit is shedding light on next on Nightside. Livestream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Do more together this holiday in the Chevy that's right for you. The award-winning Chevy Equinox. The hardworking Chevy Silverado. Or the all-new high-tech Chevy Trax. Whatever your plans are this season, do more in a new Chevy. Use your red tag bonus cash to get 8,000 total cash allowance on this Silverado. See your hometown Chevy dealer today. Experience the magic and share the joy at Disney's Frozen, the spectacular new musical. From the producer of The Lion King and Aladdin, this beloved story comes to life on stage in an unforgettable theatrical experience. You've never seen Frozen like this. Disney's Frozen is coming to First Interstate Center for the Arts, July 24th to August 4th. Don't be left out in the cold. Get tickets at broadwayspokane.com today. Hi, I'm Ken. And I'm Donnie. We lead the advocates. The advocates fight for each of our injured clients. We take on big insurance and get big results. We're both advocates. 
but we're very different from each other. That's true. I say potato, she says... Potato. Oh, I guess we're the same there. Potato, do people say that a different way? Potato. Who says it that way? Never mind. Injured, you deserve an advocate. This holiday season, Walker's Furniture and Anton Watson are teaming up with the help of KXLY to give some person or family in need the gift of a better night's sleep. My favorite color is purple. Just go to KXLY.com and nominate the person or family who could use a new mattress. And on December 21st, we'll announce the winner. Thank you, KXLY, for helping Walker's Furniture and myself spread the word for this great cause. Together, we can make a difference. 4 News Now is brought to you by Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort Hotel. Well, thanks for staying up with us here on Nightside. A crash in the South Hill left one person dead over the weekend. The sheriff's office says the crash happened on Glen Rose, south of Carnahan Road, Saturday night. Investigators say a man was having trouble with his minivan and stopped in the northbound lane of Glen Rose. The man was standing near the rear of the van when another vehicle came along and didn't see the van because it didn't have any lights on. That driver tried to swerve out of the way but slid on the icy road and hit the man and the van before sliding into the ditch. The man was rushed to the hospital where he later died. A former staff sergeant at Fairchild Air Force Base will be sentenced tomorrow after pleading guilty to stealing ammunition. According to court documents, John Sanger and Eric Eagleton hashed a plan to steal up to 3,000 rounds of ammunition a day from the base. Sanger was being investigated for anti-government social media posts leading up to the January 6th Capitol riot. He pleaded guilty to the theft charges and was court-martialed with a dishonorable discharge. Tomorrow morning, he faces between 18 and 24 months in prison if the federal court agrees to his plea deal. The off-duty Alaska Airlines pilot who allegedly tried to shut off a plane's engines mid-flight is no longer facing attempted murder charges. Joseph Emerson still faces 84 charges of reckless endangerment, though, one for every passenger on the plane. Emerson's lawyers say he never intended to hurt or put anyone at risk. His lawyer previously said Emerson suffered a panic attack while on that flight and was in a dreamlike state during the incident. They also say he took magic mushrooms two days before. The Cheney High School grad is set to be arraigned on December 7th. A place where boys should have been safe was actually a house of horrors. The Washington State or the state of Washington placed boy after boy at J. Bar D. Ranch in Ponderay County when there were no other foster homes available. It was closed all the way back in 1984, but a recently settled lawsuit is shedding light on the rapes, beatings, and torture by staff members. But among the boys, that kind of behavior was sometimes encouraged when a staff member would call open season on one of them. I saw these kids take off their boots, rocks, throw them at them, punch them, kick them, do whatever they could to beat the living. And you're talking, had to be eight, 10 kids, easy. And they swore on him. And that's what open season meant. I learned that very quickly. And that man you just heard from is the reason J. Bar D. Ranch got shut down. You'll hear his incredible story Thursday on 4 News Now at 6. Well, rates of depression in the U.S. have reached record highs with nearly one-third of adults receiving a diagnosis of depression in their lifetime. Researchers found women and young adults were the most significantly affected, with 37% of women being diagnosed in their lifetime compared to 20% of men. Since 2015, black and Hispanic adults have had a significant increase in depression, rising at about twice the rate of white adults. Talk to your doctor if you have symptoms of depression, which can include persistent sadness, trouble sleeping, and disinterest in activities you usually enjoy. And if you're experiencing suicidal thoughts or another mental health crisis, you can call or text the free Mental Health Crisis Lifeline at 988. All right, new on Nightside, genetic testing firm 23andMe says hackers have accessed nearly 7 million customer profiles, including users' ancestry reports, zip codes, and birth years. The company also says hackers access a subset of family tree information on 1.4 million DNA relatives' profiles. A 23andMe spokesperson did not respond to questions about who carried out the hack. The company says it's notifying affected customers and has taken steps to further protect customer data. Well, the Washington State women's basketball team had a close one against South Dakota State tonight. The Down to the Wire finish next in sports. Livestream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by the Tire Store. 
I definitely see an engagement with you. It's the Paradise Epic finale. A lot of decisions have to be made today. Who leaves alone? An engagement. That's all you seem to care about right now. I don't know what more I can do. Who leaves together? My heart's telling me to get engaged, but my gut's telling me don't do it. Okay. And who leaves? Please rise. Married. I now pronounce you husband and wife. New Bachelor in Paradise, Thursday at a special time on ABC and stream on Hulu. 92.9 ZCU. Toyota Thon is on. Now's the time to get an exciting new Toyota. Like Camry Hybrid. RAV4. Tundra. And more. Wow. What's next? I knew I was forgetting something. She's a wizard. Toyota. Let's go places. We love our house, but lately we've been feeling a little cramped. So we talked to ICCU about a new home loan. The process was super quick, and we got a really great rate. We start house hunting tomorrow. Preferably something with a bigger garage. Who is Culligan? Your local water experts since 1936. The world's most efficient water softener. Safer drinking water in every glass. Convenient, reliable delivery. Industry-leading technology. Here for every water worry. Well, Gonzaga basketball decided to switch things up tonight. Welcome into sports. I'm Julian Mininso. The Bulldogs made a change in the starting lineup. Jun suk -yo. Gets the start in place of freshman Dusty Stromer. Head coach Mark Few saying it was to get some extra minutes for some of the bench players. And it was the perfect game to do so. Bulldogs taking on Arkansas Pine Bluff. He didn't start, but Dusty Stromer filling it up from three. Gonzaga started the game on a 28-2 run. And that's in large part due to the big fellas inside. Braden Huff had a team high 19 points for the Bulldogs. Arkansas Pine Bluff, though, trying to get back into it. Golden Lions force a couple zags, misses. Kylan Milton all alone for the easy dunk on the other end. But Anton Watson says, I have something for that. Watson with the reverse slam underneath. And then it's the guy who got his first start tonight. How about this? Jun Suk Yo forces the turnover on defense, and it's full steam ahead for the lay-in. Gonzaga cruises to a 111-71 victory. Mark Few on his team's fast start. I thought they did a good job of just, you know, playing the game the right way and, and, and being focused and, and not looking ahead to the UW game. And, and uh, I thought it was just a really, really mature approach by the whole team. Now we can look forward to that UW game. Gonzaga will take on Washington at 8 o'clock on Saturday in Seattle. Number 21, Washington State women's basketball on the road at South Dakota State. This one was close throughout. We pick it up in the fourth quarter. Cougars with the ball. Eleonora Villa buries a big time three in the corner to put up the Cougs by seven, but the Jack Rabbits have some hoopers on their team as well. Paige Myers is one of them showing off the left hand off the glass. That cuts it to a four point game with under two minutes to go. But sophomore guard Astera Tahina has taken a major leap for the Cougars this season. Tahina with the biggest bucket of the game that seals the deal for Washington State. Cougars hang on 69 64. Tahina led the way with 18 points. WSU will take on Washington in a rivalry game at one o'clock on Sunday. And it's awards season. This is the time of year when the best in TV and film are praised for their work. And it's no different in college football. There were a lot of great players in the Pac-12, but it came down to a two-person race for the Offensive Player of the Year. Washington's Michael Penix Jr. 
and Oregon's Bo Nix. But it was Nix who, taking home the award over Penix, might be an upset to some. Both players are also finalists for the Heisman Trophy, given to the best player in college football. Penix won both matchups against Nix this season, but Nix is the winner here, becoming the first duck to take the award home since Heisman winner Marcus Mariota in 2014. As for the coach of the year, that goes to Washington's Kalen DeBoer. DeBoer has now earned the honor for the second straight season, sharing the award with Oregon State's Jonathan Smith last year. Under DeBoer, the Huskies became the first ever undefeated Pac-12 champion. Washington will be playing in the college football playoff semifinal against Texas on New Year's Day in New Orleans. Here's the full list of winners from the Pac-12. Nix was also selected over Penix for the Pac-12 first team. Arizona quarterback Noah Fafita won offensive freshman of the year. Fafita took over for former Washington State quarterback Jaden Delora, who was sidelined with an injury for most of this season. As for some current Cougs, Washington State defensive end Brennan Jackson was named to the all Pac-12 second team defense. Jackson was tied for the national lead with four forced fumbles. He was a team captain and a staple of the Cougs defense for the past few seasons. Jackson also declared for the NFL draft today. And a few Washington State players were named as all Pac-12 honorable mentions. This includes defensive end Ron Stone Jr., wide receiver Lincoln Victor, safety Jaden Hicks, and quarterback Cameron Ward. Now, as we've mentioned before, Ward has entered the transfer portal and will look for a new home next season. Victor led the Pac-12 with 89 catches this year, but did not make an all-conference team. He only gets that honorable mention there. That'll wrap us up for sports. Livestream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. At 4 News Now, we believe you should expect more from local news. Our team is committed to a community conversation and bringing you information you need when and where you need it. Numerica believes in and supports that mission. Roundups like an accidental savings account. I get paid every time I buy something. It's like a bonus for me. Your whole health is more than what you find at the doctor's office because it's all around you. The food you eat, what makes you happy, and what keeps you up at night. The place you call home. It's why we created a health insurance company that considers so much more. WellPoint, your whole health is our whole point. If you're actually trying to recover and you want to get better, it's just one step at a time. Put one foot in front of the other and you'll find that each day it'll get a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And then next thing you know, you're not even thinking about it. You're thinking about the future, not the past. I can tell you it's worth it. It's hard, but it's worth it. Just one step in front of the other. It's going to get better. It just takes time. This Christmas, treat yourself or a loved one to a new vehicle from Finley. With delayed payments for up to 90 days and bigger than normal trade-in values for your old ride. Giving you plenty of reasons to upgrade to a new RAV4, Tacoma, or Tundra truck. And if you're looking for a certified pre-owned vehicle, we've got lots of great choices for everyone. I'm looking for something sporty and fast. Don't you have somewhere to be? Ho, ho, ho. See breaking news in your area or have a story idea? Contact 4 News Now. Twenty-four hours from now, we are going to start drying out a little bit. But right now, it is moving back in <laughs> after a break this evening, raining in Spokane and in Coeur d'Alene. I don't know why Coeur d'Alene will not show up on this map until I'm zoomed all the way in. Yeah, we Dear, know where it is. Okay, yeah, I have, well, I, you know, I, I <laughs> feel bad. Like I'm ignoring, ignoring the Lake City. Here's a look at your seven-day forecast. Breezy tomorrow and rainy. Again, we'll be drying out a little bit tomorrow night. Thursday, we do have a good chance of rain, but it will not last long. And then we're going to be talking more about the possibility of some snow. And because those temperatures are dipping down closer to the freezing mark Friday, Saturday, that's that's the main reason why there. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Not as much moisture though, so it's not. If this were snow, we would be under 10 feet. <laughs>
<laughs> no doubt, with all the rain that we've had, for sure. All right, thank you so much for being with us here tonight on Nightside. Don't forget to tune in bright and early for Good Morning Northwest. It starts at 5 a.m. We'll see you all tomorrow.